Good evening. Broadcasting to you from Perth, Western Australia, this is Perth Pete. Tonight I'm going to be reading to you a series of quotes from a book by an author called Andrew Vax. I'm a huge fan of Andrew Vax's fiction works. I've been reading books by him for probably over 10 years, maybe even 15. In that time, most of the books that I've read of his feature a character called Burke and members of his chosen family. Burke is an outlaw and he and his chosen family live an outlaw life. This is the cover of the book that I've got. Um, I think um, Australians have um, generally the British cover, so I don't know whether this, uh, if this is a worldwide cover or a British or American cover. So, yeah. Anyway, this um, video will be a series of three parts because if I was to include all the different quotes that I wanted to, uh, this video would probably run over 10 minutes and would probably not be very interesting. Also, the quotes that I'm going to read to you offer different aspects of the life of Burke and or Vax and represent different things that I find interesting and enjoyable about the book. The first series of quotes that I'd like to read relate to Vax's description of New York. I'm particularly interested in finding out whether these descriptions actually match the reality of what New York is because these particular descriptions describe a very mean and nasty and violent parts of New York. The first uh, quotes relate to an area here off Hudson, south of Canal. I don't know what that area is. But anyway, the quote goes as this. Prince Kandal's car was found at approximately 3.05 a.m. near an abandoned pier off the Hudson, south of Canal. He was slumped in the front seat, immobilised. The vehicle was his personal car, a bespoke Rolls, rebodied as a shooting brake. Now this is important. The Prince had not been reported missing. The cops were not responding to a bolo of any kind, just drawn to the sight of such a car in such a place. Actually, the Prince was very lucky that night. When the uniforms opened his vehicle, he was still wearing all his jewellery. In that neighbourhood, if the cops hadn't gotten there first, he would have been picked clean. In that neighbourhood, they would have harvested his fucking organs. The next passage that I'd like to read relates to the borough of Queens. It goes as follows, and it's quite extensive, but I'll try to edit. The swamp land around JFK used to be a no tombstone cemetery, but it's been mostly filled in covered over with strip joints and high turnover motels. Once the feds caught wise that the entire airport was a mob paradise, things started to change. Throw Homeland Security into the mix and that territory isn't used so much more anymore. The whole borough of Queens is a crime pendulum. The DA's office there boasted the city's first Special Victims Bureau but there was nothing that a political showcase for a hand-picked star. Then Wolf took over, and the access shifted. The following that once you got your probation and counselling suddenly turned into a family time, into family time. But Wolf opened her own graveyard and kept it well stocked, while other sex crimes prosecutors were racking up perfect conviction rates by cherry picking the slam dunks, she was taking on all comers, even those bad victim cases that were routinely dealt away or thrown away in other offices. The pendulum swung and the freaks dropped queens from the list of their favourite places to work. Sex crime rates plunged. 
Then a new DA took over and immediately proved he was worthy of his appointment by obeying orders. His first move was to fire Wolf. That was like telling the vampires that Buffy had just left town. I prowled through walk zone streets where the only light was the occasional flare of a crack pipe, found the address I was looking for and pulled the roadrunner into the spot I'd been promised would be waiting behind the boarded up house. The back door opened just as I rolled up. I stepped into a single large room, dimly lit, with benches and cots. A scrawny black woman in a cheap electric blue dress gave me a dull look before she took her hit, slamming a spike of short-term escape into a vein, almost collapsed as her hopes. Gritty, mean streets of Queens. Another area that Vax describes is the area that Burke has one of his family members living in. It's the area called Hunts Point. Now I have no idea whether Hunts Point is fictional or not, but it certainly sounds pretty mean. In this passage, Burke is describing or having a conversation with somebody who's talking about an incident that took place in the novel. Wouldn't a simple fire have worked as well? That explosion sent the whole building into orbit. A fire big enough to cleanse that concept hunt would bring all kinds of attention. And an explosion wouldn't? No. That's the Badlands out there. Right on the frontier. A known trading post for contrabandistas. Especially those who deal in weapons. Somebody test firing product before they buy? That's just business as usual. Boom! So what? But arson? Now that's suspicious. Better the whole thing just disappears. And then later, Burke relates in memory a trip through parts of New York into Hutts Point. I didn't answer him, pointed the Plymouth to the West Side Highway. I lit a smoke, tossing the pack out in the seat between us. He helped himself, firing a match off his thumbnail, leaning back like a man in charge. I turned east across 125th, heading for the Triborough Bridge. You all got nothing but niggers around here, he said, looking out his window. Yeah, they're every place. You ever do time with them? All my life. I tossed a token into the exact change basket on the bridge and headed for the Bronx. The Plymouth purred off the highway onto Bruckner Boulevard, finding its own way to Hunts Point. He watched the streets pass, said, Man, if it ain't niggers, it spicks. This here city's no place for a white man. You like the joint better? His laugh was short and ugly. I motored on, past blacked out windows in abandoned buildings, dead eyes in a row of corpses. Turned off the main drag and headed towards the meat market. Paws working naked under clear plastic raincoats waved at the trucks as they passed by. He just watched. We crossed an empty prairie, tiny dots of lights glowing where things that had been born human kept fires burning all night long. So yeah, there's three descriptions of parts of New York as described by Vax. I'm blown away by them. Their descriptive power is pretty great. And I have, certainly have no experience of anything like that in my life. I wonder just how real they are. Stay tuned for parts two and three. And um, I hope you enjoyed this reading. Bye for now.